presenters this time who have come to us from the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. That's correct. Nice. Mm. Currently running a course on working with children. And adolescents. And adolescents, yeah. yes. Um, and you've, you've run that course several times, I guess. So yeah, it's been running for uh, about five, fifth time now. Yeah, yeah. nearly two years. Yeah. It's a certificate course for uh, either people who are already qualified as therapists or people who are working with children and young people as an upskilling. Ah, yes. And occasionally you would get a parent who's, who's adopted yeah. who wants to come yeah. and get some skills. Right, so there's a range of skills to be gained in the course. Yeah, yeah. it's a toolbox really, so it's sort of our experience as well as a theoretical uh, model. Mm. Well that sounds very interesting and I'm really interested about the word relationally in your yeah. title, so I'm really looking forward to hearing about how that all fits together. So. Yeah, we'll look forward to your presentation, how to work relationally <laughs> with children and adolescents who have been traumatised. Yes. And I haven't introduced you, haven't I? Oh, how rude. <laughs> Stephanie Cook and Amanda Phillips. We we'll look forward to your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. So, I guess before we start, uh, we need to introduce ourselves and tell you a little bit about <coughs> how come we're here and where we're from and how we beca became who we are. Um, so, my background began in the early 80s as a, uh, I started as a volunteer actually, working with children who experienced trauma. Um, and then I uh, began to work as a social worker and was trained as a childcare counsellor uh, by Norfolk Social Services actually, because that's where I, I began. Um, and over the years I worked... Um, uh, across a broad spectrum of childcare. Uh, I worked as, um, in adoption, uh, child sexual abuse, uh, and uh, with young offenders, uh, and children who have disabilities. Uh, and all the while I was working in those areas, I was working as a counsellor. Um, and then I became very interested in psychotherapy and trained as a psychotherapist uh, in the early 90s. Uh, I moved to Manchester and uh, met my, my husband and started working together uh, in the Manchester Institute of Psychotherapy. So I'm a trained psychotherapist, uh, uh, UKCP accredited psychotherapist, uh, and I also uh, now work as a trainer on our four-year programme. Uh, and obviously, as you heard uh, uh, already, uh, that I also work with Amanda uh, as a trainer for people who want to work with children. Over to you, Amanda. Okay, my background is education. I started as a teacher originally, and then ending up in Whitby, which if you know it, is on the East Coast, where teaching German to 20 16-year-olds three times a week proved a little bit of a challenge, so I thought I'd do a counselling course, as I thought I'm not really meeting any of their needs at the minute. Uh, I enjoyed the counselling, thought I might take a year out doing MA, but instead decided to retrain as a psychotherapist. So I stayed really within the field of education as well as private practice. And I've kind of tried to be a bit more, um, what should we say, adventurous in some respects. I've kind of created most of my jobs where I've gone in as one thing and kind of transformed it into another, realising that you know, the needs of the young people is not being met. So I worked in the college um, as a counsellor initially, but then very soon set up a pilot scheme and became a homeless prevention therapist. So I did a lot of work around family mediation and anger management, which actually came from the young people saying, you know, I punch walls, can you do anything for me? Uh, when I was, you know, introducing the counselling service. Um, so I did that for about five years, and um, as a result, the council approached me and said, would I um, work with young offenders who um, had all, you know, had a history of violence. So I ran um, a 16-plus anger management course and then got involved with homelessness and became a trustee of Night Stop, which is a national charity. Uh, and as is my passion for young people, I didn't stop there, but I then became a host. So for years, I had two homeless, traumatised teenagers living with me for up to two years at a time on a rehabilitation-type programme um, to try and get them then to be able to live independently and take on a tendency, <coughs> believing that you know, that one stable relationship is what they need. Um, then I met a person, he's a bit like Steffi, moved location because of a man, and now I'm in Manchester. 
So starting all over again, uh, I'm running the training with Steffi, have private practice uh, and have been working actually in York still in a pupil referral unit where the head was very open-minded having been a secondary school head herself before she entered a PRU um, to then offer a different type of counselling. So basically she said, you can do what you want which was fantastic. So I did all sorts, mending bikes, cookery lessons, photography projects, whatever the young person was into, I ended up doing. So I had a lot of free reign, a lot of creativity, and a lot of success working with those children who'd been traumatised and expelled from school, or the opposite end of the spectrum, those children who, for... Um, whatever reason wouldn't go to school, so the more school refusers that came via CAMS. So those two ends of the spectrum, really. But my experience <coughs> of, you know, homeless children, people from, who are end up in a pupil referral unit, they've all been traumatised in some way or another. Um, so that's my background, uh, and now I've taken on two stepchildren as well, which brings its own tricky situations. <laughs> So, that, yeah, that's me. So, as it says there, what we believe is it's the relationship that's important. The techniques, the theory underpin everything, but actually it's who you are, not so much what you do. That's what will engage the young person. And that's what I believe works. And as Yulom says, it's the relationship that heals. So, next. Slide. Next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what is trauma? Uh, we've got um, a definition of trauma here, which is a disastrous, overwhelming experience in which there is actual or perceived threat to the life or to the personal integrity of self or others. So that's what we're, we're going to focus on today in our talk about how to work relationally uh, and how to uh, help children manage the impact of trauma. Next slide. Will it be easier if we do it, do you think? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have to give up some technology. <laughs> I hate technology. I hope you can cope with the trauma <laughs> of it. <laughs> okay, so the impact of trauma. What we've said already is it's the relationship that's important. Yeah? Karin mentioned the three-cornered contract. Contract is very important as well. That underpins everything, the contract and the relationship. So what about the impact the automatic response to trauma is one of fear, helplessness and horror. It's that sheer terror. And it involves a production of toxic amounts of stress hormones which affect the whole core, really, the brain function, all major body systems and all social interactions. Yeah? Anything that traumatises a young person just devastates the core of who they are and they're never the same again. They might recover, they do get support, we can work through trauma, but they are altered in some way. Their whole regulation system is impacted. Sorry, I forgot it was me then. <laughs> oh, it's gone the other way. way. Okay. okay, so uh, what I'm going to talk about briefly now is about... Uh, Trauma and brain development. So as uh, Amanda's already said, what we know is the chemistry of the brain... Can...